aviator, inventor, industrialist, deep sea diver. Ed Link did it all. A high school dropout at 17, he would make himself a millionaire before he was 40. It's hard to explain how important Ed Link was to the world of inventions and the world of science. He was, simply speaking, probably the most prolific inventor we had of the 20th century. He advanced in leaps and bounds how we first explored the sky and then how we explored the sea. Because of Ed Link, we were able to do things that we couldn't do before. The human family no longer thinks of the ocean as it used to before Ed Link. Ed envisioned a tool that could simulate the feel and response of an airplane in flight. For more than a year, Ed worked on perfecting his flight trainer using his brother Theron and others as test subjects. Finally, on April 14, 1929, Ed received a patent for his pilot maker. June 1940, all of Europe is engulfed in war. The German Luftwaffe had begun terror bombing London. And in the skies over England, a tremendous battle raged for control of the air. The Battle of Britain would be the turning point of the air war in Europe. Vastly outnumbered, the Royal Air Force now relied heavily on Link's Blue Box to train their crews in record time. Air Marshal Robert Leckie, he was the head of the Royal Canadian Air Force. He said, the Battle of Britain is being won on the training fields where there are Link trainers. The small factory that Ed had started 35 years before had grown into a billion dollar industry and was now the primary simulation resource for training the men who would walk on the moon. But the aviator had moved on to a new frontier and was ready to unveil his latest creation. The deep diver was the very first uh, working lockout submarine. This was a real stroke of genius. So we would make a dive, let's say to 400, 500 feet, park the submarine on the bottom, and the divers in the back uh, compartment, in the stern compartment, would pressurize and make a lockout dive, going out into the, uh, into the ocean, do their work, come back in, close the hatch, and then come back to the surface. On January 29, 1971, at the newly created Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute in Florida, Ed and Seward launched the Johnson Sea Link. Marion described it as the first manned, diver-carrying small submersible to be made available to scientific institutions strictly for marine research. He was a high school dropout who had survived the Depression and a world war. Ed felt his life had been touched by magic. Everything I have, he told a friend, I owe to my family and to God. In 1953, he and Marion decided to start the Link Foundation. Ed and Marion, when they set up the Link Foundation, didn't set it up just to give money to people who have 100% grade levels in school. What they set it up to do was to give money to those students who showed an initiative and an energy level that would delve into the science of first the exploration of our skies and secondly the exploration of our seas. He wanted to make sure that those students had the opportunity to develop their own genius. On May 30th, 1981, with his wife of 50 years by his side, Ed Link received his fifth honorary degree from the State University at Binghamton. After his death, a friend wrote, Ed Link was a man who saw the sky reflected in water and altered our perception of both. He was a man who touched a spark in the minds of others, a spark that caused a nation to be proud and men to reach beyond themselves to the stars and into the unknown depths of the sea.